that sounds even better than normal. I, I did course... it a bit harder for you that oh, time. Oh, okay. Don't do it too hard to smash the fucking glasses. No, I didn't do it too hard. No. I know it's delicate. You, you got... <laughs> I wish you could see her face. That was a sexual innuendo. <laughs> anyway, welcome to the Wandering Womb podcast. That's a um, flavour of what's to come. <laughs> definitely is um um so this is our 38th 38. episode <gasps> that sounds amazing yes oh my god one day we'll be at 50 yeah because that's if we keep drinking work, that's how it'll... Up. <laughs> <laughs> if we keep drinking we'll be there tonight um and we are at almost forty three thousand subscribers Forty three thousand. that's terrifying Ooh. That's terrifying, isn't it? Yeah, I always forget that people actually listen to this. Yeah, I know, we just do it for fun. <laughs> and then, like, honestly, I'm not even going to lie to you. Like, sometimes I think that there's, like, just four or five people. <laughs> yeah, same. And then sometimes they tweet us, and I'm like, oh, hey, bestie. <laughs> yeah. When people tweet us around the podcast, I always think, oh, that's so nice. And we've got, like, this little fan club of, like, six people. And it's not, it's thousands every episode. I didn't even yeah. realize. Yeah, same. Yeah, no, I don't even realise. I've stopped looking at the stats, actually, but I don't know. It's just been, yeah, it's been amazing. Anyway. We, my, maybe we should, like, introduce, introduce ourselves. ourselves. Yeah. I would, I would, <laughs> can you imagine people that just started listening recently and they're like, like, there's someone says, what are you listening to? Fuck knows. I don't know who they are, but they drink <laughs> and they talk some shit. <laughs> yeah. They've not introduced themselves for eight episodes. I still don't know who they are. <laughs> we should probably introduce ourselves like every episode or every other episode. Do you think we should? Do you think the people that listen to us like all the time will be like, oh God, they're doing the intro again? <laughs> well, on every like show on TV or on the radio, they always do an introduction. Anyway. That's true. If oh, you would sorry. like to introduce yourself. Oh, I have to introduce myself first. Yeah. You always go first. Um, do I have to do a proper intro or can I just say that I'm Jess? No, you've got to do a proper intro. Oh, don't make me do that. Yep. I'm Jess. <laughs> we'll do it to this. This is Dr. Jessica Taylor. She is a forensic psychologist, um, was awarded Fellowship of the Royal Society of Arts when oh, she was God. 28 years old um, and became a doctor by the time she was 29. Or oh, you 28 as well. I think I you were still 20, 28. I was 28 when I um, became a doctor. She founded Victim Focus, the Victim Focus Academy, the Victim Focus <laughs> blog, um, <laughs> stop, stop, stop. Oh, it's awful. Um, and you um, train police forces, social workers, local authorities, um, challenging victim blaming um, of women and girls subjected to violence. And also you're on TV and the radio a lot. Thank you for that. That's all right. That's like what happens. When and also, most importantly, she's my wife. Oh, <laughs> love you. Love you. Oh, that was nice. That's like, so what happens is when people give me introductions like that when I'm about to give a speech or, or I'm like on TV. You I, call, come on stage, you're like, all right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They get this big fandangle introduction and then I'm like, hiya. <laughs> well, hiya. I'm from Stoke. <laughs> fuck off. Really. You just went, fuck off. No, it didn't. Okay, okay. okay. Uh, this is Jamie. And ja- well, I don't even know where to start with Jamie. So, Jamie. Oh, God. I know, I'm just trying to think through all the different ways that I could introduce you. So, Jamie is, I'm Sex extremely goddess. proud of this, alongside her, obviously introducing herself there as a sex goddess. I'm sorry, I'm not, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, Jamie is just starting her doctorate in politics at a top fuck off university, <laughs> which I am like immensely proud of, of her for getting into that, it's going to be amazing. And her, uh, you know, her topic is incredible um, and it's going to be life changing for so many women. And, you know, I'm just so excited to see where she goes with this. Um, she's also the founder of Politico Focus, which is like a sister arm of my company. Mm-hmm. But it's Jamie's baby because Jamie's expertise is politics and international. Um, what's the word? I'm relations. So drunk. International relations. Sorry. And human rights. And human rights. See, I was going to remember that one. So like international relations and human rights. Um and so she de- she's developed a program for um, children and for adults in order to educate them and empower them to discuss, you know, 
um, how to vote and what politics means and uh, what your rights are and critical consumption of media and stuff like that. And uh, it's cool as shit. Um, and yeah, and you also do quite a lot of work for Victim Focus. And at the moment, she's built this amazing resource that's for schools. Oh my God, you're going to bore people. Well, like, how come How come this is boring? See, this is how I feel when people introduce me. I'm like, fucking hell, shut up. <laughs> yeah, she's just built this amazing resource for schools that's on pre-order at the moment through my company. Mm-hmm. Where it's like an attitudinal measure of like how children see sex, relationships and abuse. Yes. And, like, it's just so cool. So, anyway, that's us. If you didn't know who we were, if you did know who we were, sorry. Yeah. (laughs) It's all I can say about that. We have got a really awesome topic today that we fancied because we've been watching some TikToks and we we both love TikTok. I just, I love it for just mindless, fun, upbeat stuff. Like, kids doing dances, excellent people talking about their childhood trauma excellent like but they do it in a funny way so i just love so on tiktok i follow dog stuff and i also follow like funny stuff like Mm -hmm. on purpose i like following um like particular accounts that i know make me laugh i also follow this dude who's straight up i fucking mean this invented a proper Iron Man suit that makes you fly. Like, humans can actually fly in this thing, right? And it's five grand to have a go of a go at it. And I swear to God, I'm having a fucking go of that next year. I don't give a shit. I will five, I'll find five grand. <laughs> I will fucking crowdfund that shit. I am having a go at that fucking Iron Man costume. Yeah. I want to fly. It's as simple as that. I, I need to try it. Anyway. I just upload videos of me singing on TikTok. I upload videos of me talking about work, you know, sort of psychology and violence and abuse and all that sort of stuff. However, what I upload is very different to what I watch on TikTok. Yeah. (laughs) I also love, like, anything music and, like, just, I like, that account that me and you like where they they look at how um, songs have been featured. Oh, Jerome. Oh, God, I love that account. It's good. Uh, Anyway, so uh, we were looking at TikTok and there was this uh, young woman on there who was talking about her experiences of being in a British school and it made me and Jamie laugh so much so yeah we ended up like sitting here drinking talking about uh what our experiences were like stupid rules from our schools because obviously we didn't go to school together or anything uh, we went to school in different areas from each other mm-hmm. um as we grew up you know in different areas so um and then we ended up just having a discussion about stupid fucking rules yeah and um so then we thought, do you know what? Why are we sat here drinking talking about this when we could be recording it? Absolutely. So what we've done genuinely is we've stopped the conversation before it got too deep and we've decided to just turn the mics on. Sometimes we do that. Yeah. And we go, this should be on a podcast. And then we just stop. Mm. And then we record it. So that's where we are, people. Also, though, I am of <laughs> several wines in. <laughs> so as, I don't know how much this is going to be is going to be coherent. <laughs> <laughs> what do you like right do you want to start yeah i can start and absolutely got, please please indulge us about the stupid fucking rules from your school maybe we can do one each okay go on before i start um i just want to say if any of my teachers are listening this isn't about you that's bollocks i've well, kept in touch with teachers who are sound yeah well but do they listen to the wandering Woo podcast i don't know because because i thought five people listened to the wandering Woo cast wandering womb podcast can you imagine me in a womb cast i'm just gonna i'm just i'm just gonna fill it full of some clay oh my god stop anyway (laughs) um but it turns out like 40 odd thousand do so who knows who listens to the wandering Woo podcast that's true that's true Um, wait last week we thought it was who sings i'm every woman no, it's I'm coming out. Who sings I'm I'm coming out? Diana Ross. Yeah, last week we thought maybe Diana Ross listens. Why did we think that? I had a drink. I don't remember that conversation. Because she's like, I'm coming out. And yeah. we said it was about her coming out as a lesbian. It was her coming out as a lesbian. I'm telling you now. Anyway. Right, okay. Also, sorry, before you say anything. If, you're, if anybody that ever taught you does listen to this podcast, darling, this particular oh, episode fly in my wine there's a snake I thought, in my boot. <laughs> I thought the fly had calmed down if you were listening to the last episode on being kind this is why we are not kind to flies um i was gonna say if uh, your teachers are listening to this podcast i think this episode's the least of your worries pal 
Yeah, that's true. To be honest with you. Well, they're not my teachers anymore. So no. It's fine. If commissioners are listening to it, though, this isn't Jamie. This is someone else. Her twin. Don't you dare wipe that. I can't believe you just wiped a fly. Okay, right. Go on, then. Let's let's okay. hear a story. So, I want to hear a story. Um, I guess uh, I will start with a rule that was in Year 7 music <laughs> lessons. <laughs> Where... <laughs> <laughs> well, if you pressed, for those of you who remember them, the um, Yamaha keyboards that everyone had to share between a pair in, in music lessons, um, if you press the DJ button where it go, DJ, <laughs> you get kicked out of the class. <laughs> what about the one that goes, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> What was the other one that went, oh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I used to sit there being like, it'd be like, uh, 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 oh, yeah. Uh, 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 oh, yeah. DJ, DJ. <laughs> yeah, if you, if you press the DJ button, you got kicked out straight away. Oh, fuck it up. And, um. Yeah. 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 So that's, like, my first rule that I dead for me and then also we had to keep our volume on three quarters and if you turned it up to full you got it turned down to half by the teacher <laughs> oh i fucking loved them keyboards i was very 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 rarely ever allowed anywhere near him but when i was really? well yeah i was naughty but like but when I, when i was allowed You're near them <laughs> when i was allowed near them i did actually um confirm to the teacher why i wasn't allowed near him <laughs> Ah, oh, fucking love them. I honestly, my I have no memories whatsoever of my music lessons for the whole of high school, except for deliberately pressing those buttons for a laugh and Matt Dodds throwing a cheese sandwich <laughs> in the face of our music teacher and it stuck on his face and it was fucking hilarious. And he just slapped him with a cheese sandwich and it just stuck on his face and he just stood there in shock whilst this cheese sandwich was just stuck on him. But he said, That's all I know about music. Right, this is why I'm so glad we didn't go to school together because I would have hated you. See, I was dead and I was nice to, well, I wasn't nice to everyone, but like I was sound of everyone and I like I was friends with everyone, but I didn't fit in anywhere. Right, so I would have been nice to you, but you defo would have hated me. I'd be like, stop disrupting the lessons. <laughs> I would have been one of those. And I would have gone, DJ, DJ. <laughs> oh, God. I wouldn't. I would have said, shut up and come and have a spliff. Mm, I'll, I'll, depending... calm, I'll calm you down. Come out here. Yeah, depending on what year that was, I probably would have, would have done that, but not in my first couple of years. <laughs> Didn't get onto the hard drugs until at least sixty. To, in fairness, I probably would have wound you up about being in chess club. I was only in you, chess club. You, in you year probably seven. you probably wouldn't have ever lived that down if I if I was in school with you. We right. don't mention chess club. We do. I just did. That's it about you. Thanks. Thanks. It's okay. People deserve to know, Jamie, that that's the type of person you really are. <laughs> right. Oh. Do you want me to tell you one of mine? Yes. So you were not allowed to wear a coat or a jumper or a fleece or a hoodie or anything under your blazer mm. or over your blazer on the way to school or on the way home for some oh my fucking God. random reason. Yeah. So bear in mind, we live in fucking England. It is cold and raining all the fucking time, right? There's You get three days of summer, so the rest of the time you're cold. So loads of us ignored that rule because of how cold and wet it would be and you know and it snowed and all the rest of it and so um i used to wear my blazer and underneath it i used to wear um you know like a just a zip up hoodie really just something to keep just an extra layer over my shirt because it used to, i used to get so cold uh, when i was walking to school and um it was completely against the rules to do that so if you got caught wearing yeah. it um, even if you're walking onto the ground, you'd have it confiscated. So I, it was very, very cold and it was the winter. And I remember that I could see my breath. So that must mean it was super cold. Mm. And I was walking down the driveway and this, I think it was a man. I, like, honestly, my, my memory of high school is terrible because of what was going on in my 
sort of life at the time and probably the fact that I was hung over a lot of school. And um, I, w- I remember walking up to the door and he said, um, right, I'm conversating that jumper. And I was like, I'm still outside. And he said, well, you're on school grounds. I was like, it's fucking freezing. Like, was, what's wrong with you? You've come in a coat. You're wearing a coat. Like, I was so annoyed. Yeah. I had a real issue where I was, like, really bright as, like, straight A student. But I was having none of that shit. Like, bureaucratic bullshit rules. I, they would, I would end up arguing every day about them. But, like, that one annoyed me because I couldn't understand what the actual issue is with us having an extra layer on to get to school yeah and what was the problem with that also it was really hard especially if you're wearing a blazer most most um high schools uh in the uk you wear a blazer oh no so if you're wearing a blazer it's really hard to get a coat to fit over the top so it's much easier to To put put a hoodie underneath. underneath it um, I just don't see what people's issue is with that. Mm. Like, if there's any teachers listening, can you explain to me specifically and practically what the issue is with having an extra layer on under the blazer in cold weather? Okay, so I have two things to say about that. One, everything was assumed to be gangs and gang related. <laughs> gang? What, this, wearing a hoodie? This gang. one time, they banned coloured head... Hugger hoodie. They banned coloured um, headbands. Because they thought it related to the Bloods and the Crips. <laughs> Fuck off. I'm Fuck off, Jamie. Serious. I wore a the red... The Bloods and the Crips. <laughs> I wore a red headband. In Staffordshire, the Bloods and the Crips. <laughs> I didn't know how stupid that is. <laughs> I, wore, I had this really cool red um, headband and it was like material. It had a little bow on the top. A bow? <laughs> A fucking bow? Oh, yeah. Uh, only... I don't think the and Bloods it, or the it Crips wore like, a bow. And they just assumed <laughs> that if it was blue or red, it was part of a gang. Oh, no. That is the stupidest, by far, one of the stupidest things I've ever heard. <laughs> no fucking yeah, way. Yeah, teacher told me that, so... Oh my god, that is Everything, stupid everything, as fuck. every fashion, they thought it was related to gangs. Who are these Or maybe people? they just said it was related to gangs. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, that's ridiculous. Honest to God. I, that's the type of thing. I was a wind-up merchant at school. I was just always in trouble every <laughs> single day. That would be the type of thing that if someone said to me, Jess, you can't wear that headband. You're in a gang. The next day, I would have drawn a tear on the side of my face. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't say you're in a gang. It's because they didn't want to promote gang, I don't know. Affiliation. I, yeah, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. Oh but, my god, right. that is stupid. This one time. At band camp. Oh, stop it. Um, <laughs> I was walking into school and they'd introduced this new rule that you weren't allowed to wear outdoor clothes inside. Right? You were allowed to wear inside clothes outside. <laughs> Just asking for a friend. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I'd just got in the door. It was raining. It was absolutely pissing it down. And I'd got, um, I think I'd got a hat on and a scarf and um, a coat. And I literally just walked into the doors and a teacher, I think he taught maths or something, I don't know, had a massive go at me saying that, and everyone, he was wearing a coat. He'd just got in wearing a coat. He's like, take that off. You are not allowed to wear coats inside the school building i'm like i've literally just walked in i'm about to take it off he's like take it off now i was like just give me a fucking second yeah i got done for the exact like, same what? thing as that once i walked I, in what do you want me to do told and, off, like, and he was like you are supposed to take in. it off before you enter the school building oh and what and get and get wet that's exactly what i got told off for once i was i walked in through the door and the teacher yelled at me and was like, get that off now. And I was like, I've li- you've just watched me step one foot in here i was still on the step I was, I was like, let me take it off. No, take it off now. I was like, I would have done if you weren't yelling at me. I, and, and then they're like, don't you give me that lip. No, fuck off. Stop making up they stupid rules on the spot. They wouldn't say this to other members of staff. Like, members of staff? Other members of staff. They wouldn't say it to other members of staff? Yeah. Were you a member of staff? No, that's the point I'm making it. Just because I'm oh, a student. Oh, sorry. I thought... Oh, my God. Sorry, I lost you. I've had oh a lot to drink. Um, 
I just never like I for me that was my issue is that I struggled with so I'm I'm not too bad at being a, a, to follow rules when I need to but only when I feel like they're fair and they make sense so um if somebody was to say to me this is a rule about something even as a teenager if they could explain to me why it was a rule and that it, that it made sense to me and that that seemed a good rule um I would be fine with that but if they explained it to me and it seemed ridiculous or nonsensical, then that is what they would be told. And apparently, teenagers are not allowed to tell adults oh my God, when just, things don't make sense. I've just realised that nonsense means no sense. Yeah, it means no sense. There's I've no just realised that. I've got one. We were never, ever allowed to take the blazer off. Never. It doesn't matter. So, so in, in my school that I went to... There would be no reason whatsoever why you could take that blazer off. It did not matter if it was 32 degrees. You could not ever take your blazer off. And I got put in isolation and I got suspended from school so many times for taking my blazer off. If you think that is the most ridiculous reason to kick a child out of education because I took a blazer off in the summer... And for me, it was that, and I'm still like this, aren't I? I get really, really cold, but I also get really, really hot. Mm. So, like, I overheat way too quickly, but I also am freezing in the winter. Um, And I must have been like that as a teenager as well, because I really struggled with... um, If I was sat there in a blazer and a shirt and it was the summer, I would feel faint. Like, and I'm still like that now. So, you know, I, I often, if I, you'll see me in the summer if I'm giving a speech, I'm only in a, something really light because I, I can't deal with the heat. Um, and um, I got, oh, I've been in so much trouble for taking my blazer off for the, all the years I was at high school. If I, you know, the worst situation ever, I actually got kicked out of school. I think I got suspended for about three or four days. Um, and it really escalated and I was walking between lessons with three other friends and we and it was right at the peak of summer it was so so hot that day and we all had taken our blazers off Mm. now none of us were supposed to have our blazers off by the school rules which was bullshit and um, a a deputy head came up to us and she was wearing a spaghetti vest top you know spaghetti strap vest top yeah and a little skirt and she was like, uh, girls, uh, put your blazer on. And I just looked at her, I was like, you must be joking. You have to be joking, miss. And she was like, no, do I look like I'm joking? And I was like, why? Well, you put a blazer on. And she was like, no. I was like, well, there you go then. And that it just turned into this standoff in the like between these two lessons. And um, she then made it about me. So she was like, Jessica Taylor, put your blazer on. And I was like, no it's hot like no I'm not doing it you're not wearing one I'm not wearing one and um that was the incident that I told you about where she lost her rag and shoved me and I fell backwards over a step oh my god yeah and I ended up lay on the floor because she shoved me so hard in an argument like and I just lay there on the floor and I looked out and I was like oh my god you just you just pushed me over and she went no I didn't I was like yes you did (laughs) I was just I was lay on the floor like what the fuck and that was just over the fact that I wouldn't put my blazer back on in the middle of like it was probably about if I remember it was either the end of June or it was the beginning of July um in a heat wave and our classrooms were stifling mm. like it honestly it was like my, I was like sweating it was so so bad but I think that's what used to annoy me the most was that they'd make these rules like do you remember when they used to say things like um you can't do that in the world of work. In the world of work, you have yeah. to wear a uniform and follow the rules. Look, pal, I'm in the fucking world of work. Yeah, I run a company. I mostly work in my pyjamas and I drink. Yep, Yep, same. so you can fuck off, can't you? The, the thing, like, I didn't have anything, like, as serious as that happened, but my friend once got a yellow card for taking her blazer off. It was really, really <laughs> hot. God. It was really hot, and she was in the science labs, and she took a blazer off without asking permission. She got a yellow card. Fucking hell. I'd be like, give, give me a red card. Kick me out. <laughs> I won't be in the football team. Fuck it. I'm not wearing a blazer. It was mad. It's, I just, I think it's disgusting. Like, these rules, they make no sense. They also, in my opinion, I think don't diff- teach kids autonomy. I think as well, like, with our school was, 
some of the teachers would be really angry about that and some of the teachers would be like... Wouldn't care. Yeah, of course you can take... Like, yeah. Yeah, no, Some some would be like, don't you dare take your blazer off. And some would be like, (laughs) yeah, just take your blazer off. If you're hot, take your blazer off. I've just remembered an argument about the blazer that I had where a teacher said to me, um, like, Jess Taylor, put your your blazer on. And I was like, no, I'm too hot. And they said, "Um, you won't get away with this in the world of work, you know. And I went, I've got a job and I, I... like I work part time, and when it's hot, I just wear a short sleeve shirt. And then they just stared at me like, "Fuck you, you little shit." Because <laughs> <laughs> I did. I was waitressing. Yeah, yeah. And absolutely. like, why in the fuck, in the heat of summer, would my employer insist yeah. that I wore a coat inside whilst I was waitressing? Yeah, exactly. It was just stupid stupidity. Yeah. Um, okay, you got another one. Mm-hmm. Okay, so, um, in my school, girls weren't allowed to wear the same trousers as boys. So, boys were allowed to wear black trousers. Any black trousers from any supermarket or, like, I don't know, just school uniforms. So, like, anything from, like, George or... Yeah, like, yeah, sort of any style flares, straight leg, skinny, whatever. Oh, okay. So different styles. Yeah, it just said business style. So like they could wear style. like a, a slim fit. Yeah, yeah. Learn loads. Okay, did. I see. They was they weren't supposed to wear skinny, but like they did. Like, how are you supposed to know if like a kid might just have big legs? I don't know. <laughs> He's got big legs. <laughs> just got. They're not skinny fit. They just got big <laughs> legs. <laughs> I would love to use that as an explanation. Yeah. Because if one of our kids got done for that and was like, he's just got big legs, mate. <laughs> it's um, not his fault. He's got big leg condition. But girls, so my school uniform was... <laughs> my school uniform was bottle green and the girls oh, had to charming. wear skirts. And if you didn't wear a skirt, you had to wear a bottle, like a bottle green skirt. If you didn't wear a skirt, you had to wear bottle green, straight leg, official school uniform trousers. Right, okay. And that was the rule. But the boys had complete choice around what yeah. trousers they wanted yeah. to wear. And then we fought for years. Before I was even at the school, there was ongoing like petitions and stuff to let the girls wear black trousers. Yeah. And then finally they were like, okay, okay, fine. You can wear black trousers. By the time I was in year 10. And the compromise was the girls' black trousers, you had to get them from the school shop. They... Um, were like a stretchy fabric material, hmm. but they had flares. They were flared, and they had the school logo halfway up the, the shin. Halfway up the shin? Halfway up the shin. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Not even joking. Who the fuck wears trousers with a logo halfway up the shin? I need to see a picture of this. Could you find me a picture one day? I absolutely can find you a picture. Oh, and you, I just need to see how the hell you place a logo halfway up somebody's shin on a trouser leg. Yep. Without it looking absolutely ridiculous, which I imagine it did. Uh, well, it did. Once... So obviously, needless to say, hardly anyone ever wore them and we just, you know. That's ridiculous. I want to, um, whilst you're looking, if that's okay, mm-hmm. I want to tell you about one. So in my school, in my high school... Phones, now bearing in mind, phones were a fairly new thing because of like my age, <laughs> um, which is terrifying. Uh, they were fairly, like mobile phones were a fairly new thing whilst I was in high school. So um, I think schools were still learning how to deal with that. But the rule was essentially that you weren't allowed um, schools on, you weren't, sorry, I've had too much to drink. So um, you weren't allowed phones on the school grounds, right? Um and they were kind of right. I went to a school that was very much about favoritism. Like there were some kids that they liked that mm. could literally have brought in a fucking like <laughs> fucking firearm, and they would have been like, "Oh, well done, nice. Have a have a good day. How's your parents?" Um, whereas like other kids obviously could bring in a mobile phone and they'd get put in like detention or whatever. So. Um, you know, it was very well known that the favouritism was pretty rife where I went to school and, like, every child got treated differently based on whether you were liked or not. But um, they had this policy where they would remove your phone, they would confiscate it, right? Yeah. But they would take it apart. 
Now, hang on a minute, bear in mind, like for those of you listening that didn't have a phone that could be taken apart, they used to have a back that would come off, a battery that could come out, mm-hmm. a SIM card that would come out, yep. and then a front case that would come off. Mm-hmm. Do you remember yep. that? Like the Nokias, like the yep, Nokia absolutely. 3410 and the, thir- the 3210. They would come off in pieces, and the 8210 came off in pieces as well. So, so they had this policy, right, that if you gave them your phone... They would physically take it apart into like eight pieces or six pieces and put it in a fucking drawer. Now, I remember my friend, Annie, she, she'd had um, a new phone, which obviously, like, you know, was still pretty basic. Like it was a 3410 or something like that. Uh, or a, I think a 62 or an 8210 or something, a Nokia. She'd had that for a birthday. She'd only had it about a week or so off her mum. Mm. And she had it confiscated and they fucking took it apart and they just lost the battery forever and they just they gave her the phone back as if she wouldn't notice all put back together they had no fucking battery in it, it didn't work and like she went back to it but like back to the teacher and was like where's the battery and the teacher was like i don't know that was it oh my god that's that's, fucking, that's stealing isn't it that's so similar okay so this was actually in my primary school my friends so like some you are allowed to bring your phone to school if your parents had phoned in to say that, to give a reason why you had to have it either on the way to school or on the way back to school, and you had to hand it in at the office, right? If you brought it in. Um, so one of my friends went and handed it in, and then when they got it back, a load of their songs had been deleted that were like naughty or rude songs. Oh my God. That's so, okay. I, I can top that. My friend Amy, um, and they did, they, they got her parents in over this. They, they confiscated her phone and took it to pieces, right? And they took her fucking SIM card out and they put it in their own phone so they could read all the text messages, right? And then they, sat, they, they took the SIM card out, put it in their own phone in the office, in the staff room, and fucking scrolled through all her text messages, <gasps> right? And then there was messages in there where she'd like been swearing or what. I mean, bear in mind, we're 15 at this age, mm. yeah? Like, what the fuck are they doing anyway going through that shit? Um, there's obviously no photos on there because the phones didn't have cameras or anything like that at that point. Um, but like they're just reading all the text messages, got her parents in being like, oh, she's got, you know, is this on her phone, is that on her phone? And I remember seeing her a couple of days later and saying to her like, what the fuck, man? Why, why are they even allowed to put your SIM card in their phone? That's creepy as fuck. Mm. It really is. Like, I, I just didn't know how they ever got away with that. I really don't. It grosses me out, genuinely. Well, who's gonna, who's gonna say anything? No, I know they've got no fucking power after the kids mm. in that situation. Okay. Okay. So, I have a couple that I maybe wanna wanna mention. There's a few actually. So, as I was getting older, and particularly when I was sort of in in sixth form, I was getting just more and more maybe cynical and I just couldn't be able to take people's shit and I just wasn't the same year seven chess club member anymore um so <laughs> when I was maybe in sort of year nine they started introducing like this policy where they would give if if you were wearing makeup and they could tell you were wearing like quite a lot of makeup you just give you baby wipes and make you take it off in front of them <laughs> it's that's awful it's so bad. It's humiliating is what it is. It is humiliating. Um, so, yeah, they did that, which, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't, I would, luckily I never got asked, although I don't know how, because sometimes I used to wear, like, a lot of eyeliner. Because you're a fucking nerd. And they loved you up to a point, so they up probably to a didn't let you get away with it. Yeah, up to a point. Um, okay, so they actually introduced... They introduced this thing when I was in sixth form where we had, um, if you weren't in the school building a few minutes before the bell went, the doors would lock themselves and they were on a magnetic timer and they were magnetic doors. They would lock themselves? Yeah. What would happen in a fire? I think they were supposed to automatically unlock in a fire oh i don't know well what about if you just needed to get out 
Well, exactly. So if you needed to get out, you had to go out through the main reception, which and my school was for like thousands. My school was like fucking huge. Mm. So it was a fucking pain in the arse and I couldn't be able to do that. And I was an angsty teen, you know. So Some I figured Blink out. Blink 182. Yeah, I don't know what. I know, I love Blink 182. Anyway, carry on. Um, so I figured out, not everyone knew they were magnetic. And people just thought they would lock themselves. So I figured out. I figured out that if you yanked them hard enough, you could pull the magnets uh, apart. Because, um, yeah, it's magnetic, right? Yeah, yeah. so I when I was always late, when I was in sick form, because I was like, I just want to get my results and get to uni. I did, I got my results, I got good results. Um, <laughs> I used to, like, check that no one was around, and I used to yank the doors open <laughs> and probably break their, like, yeah, magnets and say, shit. Yeah, I bet it did. Yeah, it probably did, <laughs> I used to do it. I used to yank them open really hard. And then this one time, the the doors were sort of like mirrored, so you couldn't always see in them. And I yanked it open really hard. And the same teacher who told me off about wearing my coat inside told me off about yanking the doors open. (laughs) And I literally ignored him and walked straight past him and went to the house. (laughs) So, yeah, I think it was a really stupid rule that they locked all the doors I would have been honestly. They that did it on purpose. Scares me as a kid. That well, they were, they obviously did it on purpose so they could make you check in late through the yeah through the reception. But I figured out how to yank them open, I and I'm it. really sorry, anyone, if the doors are still broken. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was Jay's fault. <laughs> <laughs> One of mine was um, that I wrote down was you can only go to the toilet when they say you can go to the toilet, mm. which. There are so many reasons why that is wrong. Like, you'd, you'd sort of, like, when you were being serious, my because friend obviously wants... there was loads of times when you weren't. I used to be like, can I go to the toilet? I used to go for a walk. I did to clear my head. But, um, it's, but sometimes you do need the toilet or, like, you're on your period or whatever it is. Like, I just don't, like, let me just explain it to you, right? This is what I don't understand. That You put your hand up and go, excuse me, can I go to the toilet? And they go, no. Like, right, well, I mean, where do we go from here? that happened to my friend and she said all right then i'll just change my tampon here yeah and he went pink yeah i bet but like i don't understand it that we're like we got to i mean they're fucking i mean these kids they're 13 14 15 16 17 and you're what just saying no they can't go to the toilet well like that's not normal. There's no environment in the world of work where you can't go to the toilet. I know. I'm pretty sure it's against your rights. Yeah. It's so weird, isn't it, what like schools get away with and claim that it's a rule. And I know why they'll say it. They'll say, oh, because they'll just wander the corridors and, you know, go to the toilet. And obviously some of us did that. Me. I sometimes used to do a lap of the entire school. And our, <laughs> our school was massive. I used to sometimes pretend that I'd forgotten my password to get into the computer and I'd just go up for a walk to the ICT technician and just ask him to change my password Would just you? so I could have a walk. Sometimes I'd just randomly, like, go somewhere, like I'd go to the office and they'd be like, you're right, Jess, what, are you all right? And I'd say something like, yeah, I've, uh, I need a slip for, like, something random. They'd be like, oh, yeah, here's a slip, it's about awesome. And then like just take the long route back and like the teacher come up and be like Jess you've just taken 25 minutes to go to the toilet and be like did I? <laughs> I don't know what <laughs> <laughs> I fucked off for a bit I like, just like, I'd had enough like, I just you know I'd, like some kids have got a lot of shit going on man school's hard um, <laughs> but yeah like you know the not being able to go to the toilet unless they say you can go to the toilet I do really struggle with that and if that was one of our kids who I don't know, like, really was... I don't know, like... There's so many situations where you might desperately need to go to the toilet. And I just... I don't know, worries me. I do, It's mad that, I would like... say to my kids, if you're ever in a situation where you desperately, genuinely need a toilet and you think that you're going to have, I don't know, you like, if you're in your period or, I don't know, you've got a bad stomach or you desperately need to go for a wee, stand the fuck up and walk out. And I will deal with them for you later. I just think as well, like... It's, it's mad that if you have a water infection, oh you have to God, get a special yeah. letter from your doctors and your parents to show your teachers that you can you are allowed to go to the toilet whenever you need it. 
you've got a UTI, you should be at home. Because as a teenage girl, if you've got a UTI, the pain mm. and all the rest of it, you really should be. And the amount of times you might need the toilet. Because some, some women, when they have a UTI, they might need the toilet literally every couple of minutes yeah. because of the way the bladder works. Yeah. It's not a joke. So, like, you shouldn't really be at school at all, mm. you know. The other one I've written down here is having a pen or pencil. Mm. The, the rule was that you had to have a pen or pencil. Now, that sounds very basic, but loads of us growing up couldn't afford a pencil case or pen and pencil, or we'd lost the one we had and we couldn't afford anything else, or we lent it to someone and never fucking got it back, or whatever it was. And so you would get punished if you didn't have one. Yeah. Like... Have you brought a you know a pen or a pencil to lesson? You'd be like, no, sorry, I, I I don't have one. Could I please borrow one? And then you'd get in trouble. Yeah. So that'd be against the rules. But how can it be a punishment or against the rules to not have an item that you can't afford to replace? Yeah. That I mean, when I was a kid, I didn't understand that. I I didn't think about it like that at all. It just made me feel ashamed. Mm. So I, I didn't have any understanding of it as as being yeah. unfair. So I never thought, God, that's unfair. I can't afford a pen. I used to just think, oh, God, I wish I had a pen. And then I would quietly say to a friend, like, can, I, can I have a pen? Can I just borrow a pen? And, you know, I would always try and make sure that I had something in my hand so that it looked like I had a pen or a pencil. But generally, it was not mine. It was somebody else's. Yeah, there were some, there were some teachers who would be like, do I look like Ryman's to you? And then there were some teachers who would just pass it over straight away, no questions asked. Because teachers get given loads of pens and pencils at the start of the year. Mm. Um, but yeah. That one makes me sad. I remember Because I don't just... think that should be a rule. I think if you have children in your class that do not have pens and pencils, there's something not quite right there and you need to have compassion. There was this lad who sat next to me in maths and we had to have um, a full, you know, like, geometry kit. Yeah, yeah. And he didn't have the right protractor or something. And the teacher um, said, if you don't have one by next week, I'm getting you kicked out of the hockey team. That's disgusting. Yeah. That's so fucking disgusting, it really is. Yeah. I think the schools can can often be a really um, oppressive place, actually. Um, and... Um, when I, I was actually in isolation once. I've been placed in. I was. I spent a lot of high school in isolation, in isolation units where I wasn't allowed to see other kids and stuff. I'm surprised I didn't go bonkers, but um, I had to do a creative writing exercise um, in English, um, and I actually wrote an essay. <laughs> She's growling. <laughs> I wrote an essay called "The Prison." And I actually, from the ceiling to the fucking floors, I described my school. Um, yeah. And they didn't notice. And I told them that it was um, a creative writing essay about a prison and I got A star. Yeah. And not once did they notice that what I described was the entire school. Oh, uh, we got... Castro's doing a growl because she wants to go to bed. Yeah, she does this sometimes. It gets a bit late. I don't know if you can hear her. <laughs> <laughs> She just stands and looks at you and sort of tells you off until you go to bed. And she kicks. Castro is basically like the only um, responsible adult in this house. <laughs> oh, baby girl. <laughs> oh, what oh you like? Castro. So that must mean that we're at the end of the podcast and that we've got. Do we have to go to bed, baby? Do we have to go to bed? Look at her well, wagging her tail. Do we have to go to bed? Is it bedtime? It is. Okay, well... That must mean it's bedtime. Castro says it's bedtime, which means it's bedtime. Okay, well, thank you for listening. Um, and if you're new, we hope that you listen to more. <laughs> and we can't always uh, guarantee that the dogs make um, an appearance like that, but sometimes they do. Absolutely. So you, have, so you have to listen to all the podcasts to figure out and to find out which ones where the dogs are on. Of course. <laughs> all right. Night.